My father was an artist and he was my favorite artist and he was my favorite storyteller and both my parents were storytellers. There was also a lot of violence and abuse and trauma going on in my household and for me when my father would relapse or go missing um, or when my mother was violent and abusive, art just became the space where I could exist as a human being, as a child, as a creative, as someone who just loved and nurtured and wanted to have friends and wanted to have some sort of safety. I did a lot of self-portrait work and a lot of representation of myself through birds. Growing up, I used to raise birds with my little sisters and I always knew that there was something ethically wrong with that, but I'd go to them and tell them my secrets and my stories and I felt like so much visibility from them and I felt like they were reflections of myself and it wasn't until I got older that I realized that my parents had children to do the same thing. We were reflections of their pains and traumas and because they didn't have anything else to relate their lives to, we were that for them. When I would start going to see the birds, I started feeling the strong, intense connection of this pain and trauma, and it just became so wrong for me. And I never kept a caged bird again, and instead I immoralized them in my pieces and uh, represent them as a, almost symbols of hope and freedom. And this image of something that was once caged and locked and contained is now free and singing all the songs it needs to and telling all its stories. Art became the space where I found safety and I found connection and I found validation and I would kind of any given moment I had I would find a way to escape and whether it was like doodling in my textbooks and getting in trouble with my teacher or uh, starting to create the beginnings of stop-motion animations through flipping through textbook pages. I just, anything that could take me back to the space of, you know, I am an individual, I am a human being, I am a child, I want to exist in a space that is not um, entirely rooted in so much sadness or so much pain. You can narrate your life in a way that's so real and valid and acknowledge your your past, present, future self in a way that's real to you and the way you create something with such intense ownership and vulnerability, no one can take that from you. I feel just so much connection to every single one of my pieces because they are reflections of a painful experience, a happy experience, a love experience, um, a sad experience and they're all experiences that are so deeply important to the human experience in, in my life, uh, to every single aspect of my upbringing. It's, it's interesting for me to have not just held on to the artistic side of myself, but also the, the child welfare advocate side of myself as well. And to have sworn to myself I was going to grow up and do the work that needed to be done for me. I know that I'm never going to get my childhood back. That's a lost cause. I know that nothing I ever do now or today will change what happened to me when I was a little girl. And because I have that perspective, I understand that children are actively undergoing experiences that I might have gone through as well. And I'm not okay with that. And working so closely with children who are in foster care today and that I've learned to love and appreciate as human beings and understand the difference again between something that's actively happening to them because of something they can't control versus who they are as human beings helps me understand that side of myself. <laughs>